By all accounts, India has put behind an excellent 2023. When we started the year, the expectation was that uh, FI24 growth would be barely 6% and we are now confident that GDP would be 7% in the current year. Uh, the Nifty has outperformed several indexes, rising over 18% and the mid-cap index a solid 42%. Joining me to decode how uh, Outlook 2024 may be, I have with me Hitendra Dave, the CEO of HSBC India. Hitendra, good morning and thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, let me start by asking whether, uh, you know, following the Fed pivot is an RBI pivot, uh, dovish pivot in order. Uh, we have seen them, at, you know, after several two, three months actually giving uh, some money in repo to perhaps loosen liquidity or at least reduce the tightness. What's your sense about uh, uh, the immediate cost of money? Yeah, hi, morning, Lata, and uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, conversation. No, I think, uh, you know, the reality is we have to step back and see how much the Fed hiked and how much the RBI hiked and how much was front-loaded by RBI versus, let's say, the U.S. Federal Reserve. And when you see that we haven't really matched them lockstep, I don't think we should therefore bake in that we will, you know, the Reserve Bank of India will follow the Fed, if, assuming that the dot plot is where is, is where the Fed is going. Um, I think the central bank has done an excellent job of, of uh, just ensuring that everybody is now focused on the 4% number, right? And they've put so much of their credibility on that number that I think any RBI action, vis-a-vis -vis FOMC action, I think will be determined, my own sense is, based on the inflation trajectory of India rather than the US rates decisions. To your question on the recent announcement by the Reserve Bank of India after almost many, many months to, pro to provide additional liquidity, my sense is I think uh, they did realize that keeping liquidity as tight as it had become for factors that they hadn't created, which is either FX intervention or currency with public or the fairly substantial amount of tax collection by the revenue authorities had resulted in, in liquidity being way more tighter than what they ideally would have desired. And I think this is just to address some of this combination of these three things coming together. I think, you know, they would like it to be closer to between 6 half and 675 rather than closer to 690 695 which it had started becoming i don't think it would be appropriate to see this as anything more than just a tactical liquidity decision and not read it as a early rate signal of some sort that's my sense oh, well let me come to the currency uh, and again now an immediate view and a slightly longer term view uh, the reserve bank has held on to that 83 uh, to 83.3 for a fairly long time, irrespective of uh, U.S. yields going from 5%, from 3% to 5% to back again uh, to 3.9. Likewise, uh, uh, you know, the dollar index going from 102 to 107 and back again to 102. What's the sense now? We're going to get a lot of dollars, but we are not getting FDI money. Uh, does it look like it's a slow drift yeah. to 84 or actually appreciation? No, so I think um, it's you know it's difficult to 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 contextualize or to verbalize why RBI is doing what it is doing, but my own sense is I think they are taking a slightly longer term time perspective than just a calendar 23 time perspective, right? They are seeing what's happened to the currency over two years, three years, five years, and longer term, and they sort of build a gradient for that long term. And in their sense, it does appear that the currency weakness over the previous two three years has been more than adequate and therefore this year you can expect or should have more stability. I think that is one part. Uh, I think the other is very clearly at an overall BOP level or a current account level, some of the, you know, like for example, just last night we read from World Bank that India is going to get $125 billion of remittances this year, which is, which is quite a remarkable number, right? I mean, it was just $100 billion just two years back, so that's $25 billion extra. I think, again, if the economy as we discussed, is doing as well as it is doing as an absolute context and also in a relative context. One should expect capital flows, both portfolio as well as FDI. And almost everyone recognizes that part of the FDI slowdown was due to the fairly uh, mixed picture on U.S. interest rates. Well, not really mixed, an expectation that we are higher for longer 
um, I think that is, as you mentioned, just in the last two weeks or so has got reassessed. So I think everything would seem to suggest that this period of stability that we are experiencing in the rupee should continue for many, many more months. Uh, you know, if we are going to be one of the fastest growing economies in the world, if we are going to be one of the best performing stock markets in the world, if we are going to be an economy where there is enough potential for FDI to come in and create whether goods and services either for manufacturing here or for, uh, for manufacturing here but for selling abroad or locally, it's very difficult to get a, a you know, negative view on the currency. The, you know, when, you know, both of us sort of over the years have always felt that the main reason for the currency weakness over the years was inflation differential. And the inflation differential has narrowed quite substantially. I mean, right now it's negative actually, but, you know, if the central bank of our country is fixated on 4% and the U.S. inflation for the longest time predict going forward is going to be around 3%, the basic economic case for depreciation has also, uh, you know, has gone away. I mean, otherwise, if a year, year and a half back, you know, and I was on your channel and you had told me that U.S. is going to take rates from zero to five half, and, you know, what would happen to the currency, I think almost anybody pretending to be an expert like us would have said the currency is just going to fall off the cliff, but it hasn't. So, therefore, that tells you a little bit about underlying broader economic changes that are taking place. No, fair point. Actually, you know, if you look at in the real effective exchange rate terms, uh, the rupee has actually gently appreciated all the way from uh, 2005 onwards. So, you mm. know, we shouldn't get carried away by the nominal number. Mm. But, uh, uh, Hitendra, you spoke extensively about manufacturing and uh, the attraction of FDI. I FDI has not has played tront uh, all of 2023 in other countries as well, but more so in India, which is a bit surprising because we thought we should get their FDI. And we have not uh, clicked, at least the numbers are not saying. Yeah. Uh, now the government itself is soft yeah. peddling on PLI for various uh, reasons. We haven't seen a, a bunch of PLI uh, approvals this year. Whatever was approved was in previous years. So, uh, you know, uh, what is the chatter that you're hearing? You may be uh, speaking to a lot of global CEOs and investors. Uh, why is it not happening? Uh, India is not seen as the next China. We are coming way behind after Mexico, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, etc. Is that looking to change? What's the chat? Yeah. No, see, I think almost every global organization, global board or senior management that one speaks to, almost everyone tells us that they want to do more in India than they currently do. If uh, That is if they are present and if they are not present at all, mm. they do worry that they could miss one of the most exciting stories to roll out in the world economy over the last, over the next 10, 15, 20 years or so. So, so the, the mood music, the optimism, the desire to be part of the story is very, very high. I think, uh, I think People aren't very clear whether to be coming here and manufacturing for the rest of the world or coming here and manufacturing for the domestic market. But I think as word gets out about the kind of income increases that people are experiencing as this 50 to 75 million consuming class suddenly starts becoming 75 to 100 million or 100 to 150 million and people will not wait for that to happen. They just want to be getting clear visibility to that trend. I am almost certain that the kind of FDI flows we are, we will generate, I think will surpass most of the most optimistic expectations. Okay. I think we have a few things going for us that you know many other countries don't have. Very clearly, democracy, very clear young population, rising incomes. I think if we just sort out the skilling and the productivity issues, I think that is when you should expect this trickle to turn into a flood. But uh, in the very short run, I think the FDI slowdown, you should attribute also a lot to what's happening in the new age economy, which was a lot funded through private equity, venture capital and that, that type of money, which clearly is not an India issue, but it's more a, a global issue. And as we mentioned, if the rates effect sort of, if, if the FOMC does do what the current market is thinking, then I think that headwind goes down. But I think between FDI and remittances and our service exports, I, I, I would be much more optimistic and hopeful that, that we, are, we are in for the best run over the next five years rather than the last five.
Okay. Uh, well, uh, the slightly medium term looks definitely cheerful, but uh, at the moment the money is not coming, so it's a bit of a worry. Uh, but Hitendra, what about the domestic PS, uh, yeah. CEOs you must be speaking with? You must be speaking to with a lot more of them. And uh, the CapEx cycle has not quite uh, uh, taken off. We see here and there uh, for cement yeah. or, uh, uh, you know, consumer durables or renewable energy, but not the, uh, the broad uh, CapEx uh, cycle that we saw, say, from 2004 to 2010. Sure. Yeah, so I think I have a slightly different view to this. That particular big CapEx trend that we saw, particularly after 2008 and up to 2012 or so, I think in hindsight, you know that that was not properly due diligence, right? It wasn't properly due diligence by the equity shareholders. It wasn't properly due diligence by the lenders, especially the banks. And eventually, what we, what we call the twin balance sheet problem now, or for the last five years, the term that we have used, really was projects that really had not been properly assessed for, for cash flow generating capacity and also had too little equity. So I think comparing today with those days might be wrong. Some of those projects, 50,000, 70,000, 100,000 crores, I mean, we all know all kinds of wrong things that did happen there. So, I, I mean, I'm almost hoping we don't get a repeat of that. But yes, we do get CapEx. I think the second reason I think we are not seeing the headline grabbing CapEx is because simply because of the consolidation that's taken place in the big mega industries, right? In steel, in cement, even in power, right? There's been fair amount of consolidation. Um, so that's, I think that with that background, I think my own sense is you are seeing, we are at least what we are seeing, is two things. One is, I think, things related to the 10 lakh crore that government of India is spending, right? I mean, anybody who's into construction equipment, road rolling, you know, those kind of things, I think they can't produce enough goods, actually. Some, some of the people have to actually be put on waiting list. Similarly, in, in both commercial real estate as well as in residential. Now, you know, this is, this is actually a very heavy employment generating sector. And where, again, you can now see that, you know, the confidence is back and, and so are the the juices are flowing there. But if we are going to measure capex or prospects of our economy or the confidence of Indian India Inc. through those 50, 60, 80, 100,000 kind of projects and largely in the core sectors, I, I think we are looking at the wrong thing then. I think you should see how many more MSMEs are running, what's their top line, what's their repayment track record and, and feel good about it. I think we now need employment-based growth as much as this very large project-based announcements. Okay. Well, got that. But over there, we enter into fuzzy uh, data territory, Hitendra, with some cantankerous arguments between what the uh, PLFS is saying and uh, the uh, CMI is saying, but we won't go there. But you've given us a very positive picture in terms of uh, CapEx cycle, what we should look at, and what uh, the world is looking at from India. Thank you very much for joining us in this special chat on Outlook 2024. And you have a great 2024 yourself.